Welcome to The Works. I'm Ben Peltier. And I'm Ben Che. Formed three years ago, the Hong Kong indie group Co plays instrumental electronic jazz fusion with free-flowing and distinctive compositions. They'll be here later in the studio. Hong Kong conceptual artist Mac Tu is a graduate of City University's School of Creative Media, but she doesn't confine herself to just one form of artistic expression. She's also a stand-up comedian, a director, and a YouTube content creator. Mac Tu often explores different issues, such as philosophy and technology. Her recent works in the exhibition titled What We Are at the Dissart Gallery and her Encounters installation at this year's Art Basel Hong Kong reflect how she uses creativity to inspire others. Hi, I'm, I'm Mac, Mac Tu. Tu. Which, Which one, one is the real, real me or, or neither, neither of them? them? Conceptual artist Mac Tu is known for bringing disparate elements together in surprising and unpredictable ways. Her works were showcased along with seven other artists in a group exhibition titled What We Are at Dessart Gallery last month. If I had to choose one adjective to sum up this exhibition, I would say the word is freedom or autonomy. I think this idea is better encapsulated in the exhibition's Chinese title, which is Sang Yi Wai Mu. The exhibition title uh, means being born as me, but living for myself. So it's sort of this idea of just being or wanting to be able to just follow our instincts and doing what we want and having autonomy over our lives. Philosophical ideas are one of the subjects that Mac Tu often reflects on through her works, which include videos, paintings, and installations. Her work, Robot Mac Mac, explores the relationship between humans and technology. She deep fakes her face onto Robot Sophia, which is the first uh, artificial intelligence robot to uh, receive a, a nationality or a passport. So by replacing her own face onto the robot, she refers the idea of robots trying to mimic humans, but rather she as a human is trying to mimic the robot. This artwork reflects on how technological advancements, particularly in data analysis and machine learning, are redefining our concepts of human uniqueness, traditionally based on our physical and intellectual characteristics. If machine can create digital personas identical to humans, it challenges our uniqueness. As a conceptual artist, Mac Tu presents her ideas using daily objects. In her early work series, Funny Stationery, she pulled out the equal button of a calculator and named the artwork, I Can't Live Without You. There was also a square drawn with a compass titled, Everyone Makes Mistakes. To me, conceptual art challenges the conventional notion of art as an object of visual pleasure and instead emphasizes the artist's thought process and intent. It invites viewers to engage with and reflect on the ideas presented. In my work, Sterilization, in 2013, where I meticulously removed seeds from a strawberry, transforming the act into something akin to a medical procedure. This approach helped me think creatively in a pattern-filled society. Later, my focus shifted to technologies for the contest. In my 2080s work, Mr. Fu wants to move the mountains. I challenge robotic vacuum cleaners to move large sand piles in a gallery. Inspired by a traditional Chinese tale about overcoming impossible odds through persistence. This work underscores my belief that technology can actually take us to unimaginable places. Using contests as part of the medium is a significant part of conceptual art. Without contests, there is no content. I don't know Apart from being a conceptual artist, she is also a stand-up comedian, an actress, and a director in her own short film series, Hong Kong's Next Top Artist. Humor and interesting ideas are central to her work, regardless of her roles.
Her most popular series, Home Sweet Home, which debuted in 2019, has attracted a lot of attention. In this year's Art Basel Hong Kong, she presented some new works from the same series. So I come up with this idea, which is to build things in the game called Sims. And in Sims, there is a location which looks very much like Hong Kong. And in that location, I sometimes build dreams-like environments and sometimes dystopian environment. When it is completed, I exploited the JPEG and cut them into three parts and send each part to different painters on Taobao. They actually, they don't know they are finishing a painting. So you can see my trip text, they are not matched. What I want to say is uh, the ideal version of home in my head, when it is translated in reality, it doesn't look the same anymore. To make her ideas and concepts visible, Mac 2 also creates installations. In this year's Art Basel Hong Kong's Encounters section, she made a seven meter tall installation titled Copy of Copy of Copy of Copy, the largest scale work she has ever put together. This installation is divided into two parts. The lower part is an exact replica of the Zars current booth in Art Basel Hong Kong, embodying the present. The upper parts, attached hat to hat but flip over, is the re-emergent booth 200 years from now, representing the future. The overall from along with the upper parts of the installation aims to resemble a historical landmark. The top part looks like a relic of the past, yet from a future where our present location has been abandoned. I've also incorporated mirrors on the two tables, one on the floor reflecting the futuristic upper part, and another in the upper part reflecting the lower. Into the mirror, they become intertwined in the artwork simultaneously, situated in the present, the past, and the future. To some, art may be abstract and hard to understand, but for Mac 2, having created art for over 10 years, Art is her power and energy. A lot of my friends in the art world seems to be suffering. You know, art for them is painful. But to me, art is like a resilient force of creativity. It should not torture its creator. It should give you the power to confront seemingly difficult things. But I must emphasize that this answer I give today might not be the one that I give tomorrow. The European Union Film Festival is an annual event that brings the finest in European cinema to cities around the world. To welcome you all to the uh, opening ceremony and the first... This year, 16 acclaimed European films that have never been screened before in Hong Kong will be featured from 11th to 21st of April. This diverse selection encompasses genres such as comedy, thriller and drama offering a compelling cinematic experience. This year is the 15th EU Film Festival in Hong Kong. We have uh, 16 films from uh, different European countries, uh, including uh, member states of the European Union, but also, also from Switzerland, who is a long-standing partner of, of, of us. Uh, this year we're opening with a Ukrainian film, uh, which shows our support to to Ukraine in this difficult moment. Chinas is one of the films. Directed by a Spanish director, the plot follows three Chinese girls residing in Madrid, whose lives intersect despite their contrasting backgrounds. The film delves deep into the quest for identity among the descendants of immigrants. But it's about a, uh, a Chinese family in, living in, in Spain. So I think it shows it's about the daily life which Chinese families have in, in Europe. So in, in that sense, it brings a little bit of, uh, of the reality for a Chinese family living and adapting to life in Europe. Uh, just like we want to show also different aspects of the diversity of Europe in different European countries uh, to audiences in Hong Kong. These films, they're the first time that they're shown in Hong Kong. We really, we, we really hope that as many Hong Kongers will be able to see, see these films and, uh, and get a taste of what Europe is about. The selected films align with the EUFF's goal of promoting diverse cultural tapestries to cinephiles through the powerful medium of film. Welcome back. 
Formed in 2021 during the pandemic, Code is a local indie band that blends jazz, metal, and fusion into their instrumental electronic sound. With a unique style characterized by free-flowing and distinctive compositions, their music is further enhanced by cinematic and modular synth sounds. The band consists of four members, two of whom are also co-founders of an electronic and rap music label. They're here with us now. Okay, members of Code, welcome to the works. Uh, hi. So let's start by telling us your names and what you play in this band. I'm Gil, I play the drums. I'm Maka, I play the bass. I'm the guitarist, City. I'm Loisi, I play keyboard and modular synth. Cool, welcome to the works then. So I'm going to begin by asking you about the name uh, Code. Uh, how did the name come about? We have been friends for decades. Being in a band and playing music together is just like hanging out with old friends to us. The name Code, um, it serves as a neutral term to characterize our playing style. Just like coding, um, we don't want to define our playing style to a particular one, so mm -hmm. we choose the name Code. How did you come up with the sound that you currently have? Like, how did that develop? Yeah, so, I guess each of us uh, listen different kind of music. So, maybe I listen to electronic music, and um, some of them like hip hop, uh, jazz fusion. So, mm. we're like four chefs right here. Mm and putting our own ingredient in one dish. Right. Yeah, so we just come up with an idea and everyone just start jamming. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we have uh, maybe a melody mm. or a rhythm session, something like that. So um, we just expand on it. Right. And we didn't think about that much. Actually. So it's very organic, right? Very it's organic, yeah. It's, um, I think sometimes we just like um, like play a song, yeah. And after maybe he liked the song, or maybe he don't like the song. He doesn't like the song, but um, we just don't judge each other mm. for 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 that kind of music judgment. Right. We just keep it up and yeah, tell everyone it's like I like it, and or I don't like it. So simple. Right. We just so like. Yeah, do what we want. It sounds like a very uh, fair process, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it sounds like you guys also have a good sort of chemistry. Um, so you released an album last year. Uh, tell me a bit about that album and um, how the story behind that. Um, so yeah, the the album is called That Is Secret Folder. Um, so we actually play those songs for quite a long time, like. Before the album release, we already play like two years. Mm -hmm. So one day we just decided to uh, record it and put it on platform. Right. Yeah. And was w w was it challenging trying to recreate the live sound on record, especially in this day and age? Um, I think it's much more easy because yeah. we listen to a click and we just put everything because. During the live, you just have two hands and that's all you got. Mm. And in the recording, we just doing like um, putting a lot of stuff on it. So it's much more easy to me. Right. I don't know <laughs> what they think. And about what was it. your experience like for maybe Gil and Maka? Mm, uh, for me, uh, playing live is, I think, more difficult than uh, recording. Because uh, when we play live, we always improvise, mm. and something will happen very quickly, and we have to respond to each other. And but I think live playing is um, sometimes better than the recordings. Right. I mean, you, you mentioned the word improvising. Uh, for, for you, Maka, is, is that something that you enjoy doing? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, I like. Uh, I like playing jazz, mm. so I like improvise. So uh, I have my part in the songs, which uh, I I also improvise uh, solo, something like that. So right. yeah, th it's some uh, ingredients I definitely want to add to our band. 
Okay, so let's talk about, about the instruments. Uh, I want to ask you, Loise, in particular, you use something called the modular synth, which we can see over there. Um, what, what does that do? What is a modular synth? Well, it's basically you have different modules. You can choose whatever you like. Mm. So some people will create um, one, one voice synthesizer in that rack. So what I do is uh, have some like sample, uh, sampler, uh, oscillator, something like that, to connect with my piano. Okay. So um, you can do quite a lot of different sounds of it, like glitchy, um, crunchy kind of sounds. I already have a sampler right there, and I connect the sampler into the root rack, so I can do a lot of uh, effects on it. Mm. So basically, the rack is a effect rack for me. Wow! Yeah, right now, yeah. So a lot of lot of options. Yes. And uh, going ahead. So what are uh, the plans for Code in 2024? We do have some plans. We are planning to release our album maybe in this year, and also organizing an overseas tour. We plan to go to Taiwan, and maybe around in November. Yeah, Very and, and also seeking other opportunities, maybe in Japan and Korea. Like Asia area. Well, finally, uh, you guys are here, and I know you're going to play a song for us in the studio. Uh, what is the name of the song, and tell me the story behind the song. So the song uh, name is Brunch, and uh, we call it Brunch because uh, we are, we're not, uh, we, 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 all of us is a night person. <laughs> when we wake up, we we have brunch, not breakfast, <laughs> <laughs> and we're just trying to have fun, actually. And uh, songs is uh, the the demo of the song is uh, I I made in the Ableton in the computer mm. in my computer uh, first half of the song, and then and then uh, I I just developed with these guys uh, a second half of the song. Okay. Cool. That's, well, that's a story. <laughs> all right. Uh, I look forward to hearing it. Thank you, Code, for coming in, and uh, let's Thank hear the you. song. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.